In this video, we watch how the ISBN exercise from series 10 can be completed. Here, we want to design our own data types using classes. As already discussed in the different clip, each data type has specific properties that reflect the status and methods representing the behavior. In previous exercises, we used, for example, objects from the string class. Each object in this class has certain properties, for example, the name helium, which reflects the status, and a number of methods. Objects are created as instances of a class. Each object of a particular data type shares the class's methods, but each object of this class has its own value of the properties. For example, a string with the name helium as one of its properties can perform the methods described here. And another string with the name argon, for example, has a different value for the same property, is in a different status, but can perform the same methods. Instantiation or creating a new instance of a class is done by calling the class name as if it were a function. The members of this new data type are called instances or objects. For example, you can create an object from the string class by calling the name string as if it were a function. The instantiation operator calling a class object creates an empty object. Here you have an empty string. Similarly, we can create an example of the list class by calling the class name list as if it were a function. This results in an empty list. Each time you create an object of a certain class, its init method is called automatically. This method initializes the object. This means that in this method all attributes can be initialized. The attributes get an initial value. Once an object or an instance is created, it can execute all the methods described in its class. The class can indeed be considered as a blueprint or a template for making objects. It is the machinery to make instances of the class. Each object you make from this template is an instance of this class. In the ISBN exercise from series 10, we should define a class, ISBN 13, that supports all these methods. Especially the initialization method, init, which is called automatically when the class is called, should take an ISBN 13 code as an integer argument. We should also add some other methods to this class. Adding a method to a class can be done by defining a function in a class. The object itself is always passed to this method as its first argument and it is called self. For example, we created an object code by calling the class and to call the method is valid, we should address the object code and ask it to execute the method is valid. In the ISBN exercise from series 10, we will use the ISBN 10 and ISBN 13 scripts from the previous exercises. This class, ISBN 13, should support several methods. An initialization method, init, should take an ISBN 13 code as an integer argument and should have an optional parameter that indicates the number of digits in the specification of the country group. The default value for this parameter is 1. In case the given length of the country group is not in the interval 1 to 5, the methods must raise an assertion error with the message invalid ISBN code. These parameter values will initialize the properties, the, the attributes of this class. Furthermore, we should override the string method. This method should return a string representation of the ISBN 13 code in this format. This method is called by built-in functions like print to compute the nicely printable string representation of an object. The wrapper 
methods representation must compute the official string representation of the object. This should look like a valid Python expression that could be used to recreate an object having the same status. The return value must be a string object. The above methods are built-in methods of the ISBN 13 class. That means, for example, when the built-in function string is called, it will be automatically converted to the built-in string method with the object itself as its first parameter. We'll solve the exercise step by step in PyCharm. We create a new Python file in the series 10 folder and name it ISBN. Here we will describe the new class ISBN 13. The syntax of a class in Python starts with the word class and is followed by the name of the class. All objects, instances, which we will create later from this class should have two attributes an ISBN 13 code and the number of digits in the specification of the country group. We initialize these in the init method. This method's first argument is the instance itself, indicated by itself, and is eventually followed by other arguments. In our case, we get here the ISBN 13 code and the optional argument length, which by default gets the value 1. Code and length are the only attributes, the only properties of the objects in this class. These attributes are initialized here with the values from the argument list and will be referred to as self.code and self.length. The optional parameter length should have a value between 1 and 5. If this is not the case, an assertion error must be raised and the program terminated. To this end, we add the following line in the code. The length should be between 1 and 5, otherwise the message in valid ISBN code will be displayed. We will also check if the code is an integer and will print an error message if it isn't. Like this. So we initialize the uh, attributes sound.code and sound.length with the values of the parameters. As we will need to select or insert characters in different position of the integer argument ISBN 13, known as code, it is for further processing purposes easier to convert this code to string. Secondly, we provide a string method which returns a string representation of the ISBN 13 code. This string representation should contain dashes in between the information fields of the ISBN 13 code. From the example on Dodona, it appears that the argument code should be divided into four parts. Three digits, then the country code, the identification of the publisher and the item, and a check digit. Since we converted the code to a string, we only need to return the different parts of this string in the correct format using the string method format. Here, the string method only takes one argument, the object itself, and returns a string in a certain format. The attribute self.code is divided into four sections separated by dashes. The first part, 979 or 978. The second part represents the country code and has a length of self.length. And the third part is the identification of the publisher and item up to the last but one character. And the very last character is the check digit. The following method, wrapper, returns a string representation displaying how the object can be initialized in Python code. This means that it must look like this with one or two arguments. So we need to return a string in a certain format. We create the string in the same way using the string method format. 
The first argument is the self.code code, and the second argument is the length of the country code self dot length, and then you get this. The above methods are built-in methods, which can be recognized by the double underscore at start and the end of the method name. We override these methods so that we can return what we want them to return. The class is ISBN13 should support two more methods. The method is valid and the method as ISBN10. The method is valid must return a Boolean value that indicates whether or not the object is a valid ISBN13 code. We solved this problem in the ISBN exercise of series 8, so we can copy the script here. So we define the function is valid with one parameter, the object itself. We calculate the check digit and then compare it with the last character of the attribute self.code and depending on the result we get true or false. Note that the method is valid is declared with an explicit first argument representing the object which is provided implicitly by the call. The last method, as ISBN 10, must return a string representation of the code as an ISBN 10 code. If such a representation does not exist because the object does not represent a valid ISBN 13 code, or because the ISBN 13 code is not prefixed by 978, then the method must return the value num. First, we check the validity of the code. If it is not a valid ISBN 13 code, or if it is not prefixed by 978, the function returns num. Otherwise, the code needs to be converted to an ISBN 10 code. We take the part of the code from the third character to the last but one. From these 10 characters, we determine the check digit using the script from series 6. After all, the check digit in series 6 is calculated on the basis of the first nine digits. And depending on the value of this check digit, an x or the string value of this digit is returned. The function sisbn10 now only needs to return a string using the format method, country code, identification digits, and the check digit separated by dashes. To test all this, we also add the doc test and run the program. No errors show up. The exercise is now ready for submission. In this video, we designed our own ISBN 13 data structure created objects of this class and wrote various methods for returning and testing these objects.